الحمد لله الحمد لله معز المؤمنين وناصر الموحدين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له القوي المتين وأشهد أن نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله الصادق الأمين أرشدنا إلى كل خير في الدنيا والدين صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Respected brothers and sisters اتقوا الله تعالى Fear Allah as he should be feared and prepare for the hereafter. Taqwa is a shield and a way of salvation in this life as well as in the hereafter. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ittaqu Allah haqqa tuqati wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared, and you shall not die except in the state of Islam. Ya ayyuhal nasu taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathira wa nisaa وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا O people, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul and from it created its mate and spread from all of this so many men and women. Respected brothers and sisters, today is the fifth day of this month, blessed month of Ramadan. This is a month of fasting and forgiveness, a month of so many mercies and blessings. And this is why we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making it possible for us to reach this month. Many people were not able to reach the month because their life ended before the month of Ramadan. Or they were not guided to the right path. And so they're not getting the blessings and mercies of this month. How many people are deprived of reaching this blessed month? Just think about your neighbors, your friends, and many people who are not able even when they are still alive because they are sick they cannot fast or they are misguided and they are not respecting this month which Allah brings every year for people to refresh their souls to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my respected brothers and sisters since Allah created this universe and the confrontation between haqq and batil, between truthfulness and falsehood has been going on. And those who follow falsehood come into confrontation and animosity towards the believers. They say clearly that they are against them. 
They hate them. They don't accept them. <coughs> and even they want to kick them out, to spell them out of this earth. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِرُسُلِهِمْ لَنُخْرِجَنَّهُمْ مِنْ أَرْضِنَا أَوْ لَتَعُودُنَّ فِي مِلَّتِنَا فَأَوْحَى إِلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ لَنُهْلِكَنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ وَلَنُسْكِرَنَّكُمُ الْأَرْضَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامِي وَخَافَ وَعِيدِ The disbelievers say or said to their messengers we will spell you out of our land, or you come back to our religion. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the messengers that we will destroy the transgressors of Zalimin, and we will let you inherit the land and live in that land after them and this is for those who fear the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear the day of judgment. This is a fact that the disbelievers will always try to beat and be against the believers and they want to make the world a hard place for them to live. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the believers that they will overcome, that He will be on their side. And at the end, it will be the victory for believers. Look at the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa how he lived in Mecca and how his own people tried always to kick him out, even tried to kill him. They persecuted his followers. They even attacked his honor. They said all the bad things about him. They said he was crazy, he was a magician, he was a liar. They used the media at that time available in their own hands to tarnish the image of the Prophet ﷺ. They even put the Muslims in the valley with no food and nothing until they ate the leaves of the trees. <coughs> For three years they were in that valley of Abu Talib. So severe persecution, they wanted to even eliminate them if they could. But look at the end. As the da'wah among Muslims spread it, and the Prophet وسلم, gained many followers day by day, until he had to migrate to Medina, where he found the support of Al Ansar. And then he came back to Mecca as a conqueror to conquer Mecca again and to be victorious. And they thought, disbelievers, thought the Prophet is going to retaliate against him. He will set courts to pass out judgments. But the Prophet never did it. What he did, he said, Go, you are free. The point is you want to establish the religion, not to establish your own authority. And that's a lesson for Muslims. 
The conference of Mecca happened in this last month of Ramadan, in the eighth year of Hijrah. What a wonder, all the victorious battles of Islam took place in the month of Ramadan, especially Badr, which is a very famous battle where the, the, the word of Islam started to spread all over. And then the Congress of Mecca took place at the end of the month of Ramadan in the eighth year of Hijrah. Today, we see the same war being waged against Islam and the Muslims, against the glorious Quran, against the person of the Prophet You have seen it, you know, through the media, by politicians, by enemies of Islam, how they attacked Islam, how they wanted to tarnish its image and to show the world that Islam is the religion of terrorism, hate, exclusion, and it's not a religion of coexistence and acceptance of others. They went so extreme on a daily basis and through all the means they have in their own hands to tarnish that image. They want to show that Islam is not the religion of civilization. But if they go back and think about the contribution of Muslims to the world and to civilization, knowledge and science, they'll find volumes written by Westerners and non-Muslims about the contribution of the Islamic civilization to the world. They're creating what is known today as Islamophobia. They want to create this hatred in the hearts and minds of people about Islam and towards the Prophet and the glorious Quran and Muslims everywhere. Anyone having a sign of a beard or wearing a thong or a woman having a hijab, this is a person that is deviant. This is a person in their mind who is not a civilized person, who wants to take us back into the dark ages. So they thought. And we know how this mentality and work has produced this fear in the minds of so many people. And this speech of provocation against Islam continues even through the social media. We find groups that are made by the enemies of Islam telling lies and saying bad things about Islam and Muslims and attacking Islam in so many different ways. We saw people burning copies of the glorious Quran. Even Na'udhu Billah using filth applied to our glorious book, the book of Allah, the words of the great Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Almighty. We can see how this is hurting the hearts of believers. How this is really has come to a point where many people have reacted. Of course, many wise people reacted in the proper way, which is to come and engage people, explaining to them what Islam is all about, telling them about the message of Islam as a message of mercy to mankind, as a way of we have not sent you except to be a mercy to the worlds, not only to humans, but to environment, to the worlds, to the worlds of animals, to the world, to the environment, to everything that is created by Allah. 
Islam is a mercy, without a doubt. And look at the instructions, we know you know that. As Muslims, this is fully explained in the glorious Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet However, some, which is a little small segment among Muslims, took the war into a different path. They started to retaliate and say, we need to support Islam, to show the world the dignity of Muslims. And that's why they started to attack and use violence and terrorize people, going to places of worship and blowing up churches and synagogues and so on and so forth. That's the reaction the enemies of Islam exactly want. They want to provoke Muslims even to prove that Islam is the religion of terrorism. That Islam does not accept the difference among people. So these people were carried away and took the law into their own hands, as they say, and retaliated in this fashion, which is wrong, Sharia-wise, law-wise, from all perspectives. We saw how that brought even more pressure, more animosity, and even terrible actions against Muslims. We saw what happened in New Zealand a few weeks back and how a crazy person who was influenced by this mentality and the media bombardment on a daily basis how terrible Muslims are and he's the thought that the only way to do it is to kill Muslims and that's exactly what happened he took the gun and he went into two masjids and he did what he did but subhanallah the reaction of Muslims, even the New Zealand government, was so exemplary in the way they dealt with this crisis and they observed this incident in a positive way. And this exactly contributed to the benefit of Islam and Muslims. And we saw how that was started to grow even more in that part of the, of the world and even throughout the world. This is exactly what we need. We need, my respected brothers and sisters, although we feel the pain of how these attacks are being weighed on a daily basis, but the reaction should be wise, should be calculated in a positive way. You should turn these things into uh, a positive thing for the benefit of Islam and Muslims. The way to get out of this is to clarify the image of Islam and to clear it from all this tarnish and the very bad images being attached to it by either the enemies or the ignorant Muslims who are not wise enough to understand and even to depend on Sharia and to follow senior, well-versed scholars of Islam on what they say in this regard. What we need, my respected brothers and sisters, is to come back to Islam and to understand it even more. This is our responsibility today. It is incumbent upon every Muslim to consult the glorious Quran and the Sunnah and to learn more, to understand the message of Islam and even tell some people who, particularly the young ones, who may have some ideas about the world, that the world is bad, the world is, is uh, uh, all the ways are blocked and there is no way out except to resort to violence and destruction. This is not the way. Look at the life of the Prophet sallallahu How he stood fast and how he taught the companions to stand and not to react 
And you remember what happened in Mecca for 13 years. He stood with firmness on the deen, but again, not resorting to violence. Although many companions came to him and asked him, should we, shouldn't we retaliate? Shouldn't we do something? Why are we being oppressed? But he said, it was not, permission has not been given to me to do this. That's what we should understand and make the way of doubt. As Allah says in the glorious Quran, ادعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن إن ربك هو أعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو أعلم بالمتدين. Call upon the path of your Lord with wisdom, knowledge, and good preaching, good words, and interact, dialogue with them, meaning the non-believers, with what is even the best, not only with what is good, but even what is best for Allah knows and is knowledgeable of those who are misguided and those who are being guided. May Allah guide us to the true path and barakallahu wa barakum fi al-Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'inu wa iyyakum wa nafi'inu wa nafi'inu wa nafi'inu I say what I say and I ask Allah for forgiveness so please ask Him for forgiveness at this precious time. الحمد لله الكريم المنان المتفضل على عباده بالهداية والإيمان وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الواحد الديان وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى الحق والسلام والإحسان صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان أما بعد All these campaigns that we see trying to make the image of Islam so bad in the mind of all people. The enemies want to shake the belief of Muslims themselves in their religion. They want to instill in their hearts so many doubts that Islam is good for life, that Islam cannot live in modern age and cannot comply with today's world and openness and democracy and so on and so forth. They want to turn people away, starting with Muslims. And this is the danger, my respected brothers. Even if the, the enemies do not attack the Muslim countries with weapons and engaging them in a military confrontation. But there is this soft power confrontation. Information, using the media, using the speeches, writing books, articles, bombarding people with these uh, uh, features. And uh, what you see in the, in the media, either television, radio, the press, and the social media. There are many who are working hard to continue this war, and the only way to react to this is to learn more about the deen, is to tell others what Islam is. And that's the kind of confrontation we said that will ever exist between truth and falsehood. And we shall have no doubt that Allah is supportive of Muslims. Allah will stand by those who are weak as long as they persist in their Iman, having no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give them victory. He may test them, He may even, as this happened, as we know in Badr itself, in Uhud, the Battle of Uhud, 
where even the Prophet ﷺ was injured and people fled away from him, even the companions, the best generation to come with the Prophet, peace be upon him, yet they came back and they corrected their mistakes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end gave them victory and made their word supreme. So we need to do the same thing, my respected brothers and sisters. We need to do our share of responsibility towards this deen. Within our small groups, within our colleagues, with the media now being reaching every corner of the world, we can do something. And believe me, many uh, Muslims with little knowledge have achieved so many good things in clarifying the image of Islam, presenting the correct information on Islam. And alhamdulillah, nowadays, the right information is available on the web. And it's available for trusted sources so that we can make the word reach out. What we need to do is not to think about violence and uh, temporary reactions or just uh, complaining and keep on having this spirit of frustration. On the contrary, what we need to do is to be positive, proactive, not passive, because if you are passive, that means you care less about the situation of Islam and Muslims. The Prophet gave us the example and we should follow that example in his life, in his sunnah, and even throughout the ages we found that exactly this is what the uh, what great Muslims who made a difference in life did in order to uh, support this deen. Allahumma sallallahu al mumin اللهم ثبتهم على الحق اللهم أعد المسلمين إلى دينهم عودا حميدا وردهم إليه ردا جميلا اللهم أرفقنا لهداك واجعل عملنا في رضاك اللهم احفظ هذه البلاد اللهم احفظ الكويت وأهلها وقيادتها اللهم أدم عليها عزها وأمنها واستقرارها اللهم احفظ عبادك المؤمنين اللهم جددنا الفتن وأخرجنا من المحن اللهم انصر كتابك وسنة نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم وعبادك المؤمنين ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم واغفر لنا انك انت الغفور الرحيم اللهم انا نسالك الثبات على الامر والعزيمه على الرشد ونسالك يا رب ان تحمي المسلمين من الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن وان تنشر السلام والامن والاستقرار في هذا العالم وان تجعلنا من عبادك المخلصين بمنك وجودك يا أكرم الأكرمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ونبيك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مرمو